Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and today we have got a couple of news stories to talk about in the world of tech. First up, we're going to be talking about AMD Ryzen 3000 series, specifically the 3950X, and the bidding of the chiplets, which is going to make for one hell of a CPU when it does release in September. And also, we're going to talk about Microsoft and how they are now using machine learning to force you to update your Windows 10 version. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2016 Professional Plus for under $40, and Microsoft Office 2019 for under $80. And if you use my code JSL22 at checkout, you can get 22% off of Windows 10, or use the code JSL16 to get 16% off of any software over on levelgo.com when you use the links down in the description below. So as I said first, we're going to start out talking about AMD and Zen 2, or the Ryzen 3000 series lineup, but more specifically the 3950X, which is going to be launching in September after the initial launch of the Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7 processors, which are coming out on July 7th, the same date as the Navi GPU. So that is going to be one hell of a day and a very hectic day probably for your sub boxes once you start seeing reviews rolling out. But obviously I think many of us are going to be excited to see the 3950X. I know I am def definitely planning on using one of those in my main system and upgrading from the 12 core as soon as it comes out. I'll probably run the 12 core for about a month or two. And then once the 3950X comes out, I'll go ahead and switch over to that. Um, and there's good reason. They are binning these chips and that is a good thing. And it's really um, one of the reasons that they're able to actually do a 16 core CPU, but also not have to sacrifice clock speeds, actually putting the highest boost frequency on the 3950X of, th of a 4.7 gigahertz so they're able to do this from for a number of reasons first off it's because it's seven nanometer and with that node shrink means that they are able to fit more on a single wafer versus previously on 12 nanometer which means they have a lot more room for error there so it's going to cost them less to actually bin these cpus and then that is passed on to the consumer and even though these are going to cost 750 dollars and part of that the reason that it is more like 250 dollars more than the 12 core cpus is because of that binning process so that they can make sure that the silicon on the 3950Xs are the best that they possibly can. However, if they weren't doing seven nanometer and they were taking as big a loss as they would on yields compared to something like 12 nanometer or 14 nanometer, you can bet that that $750 price tag would be significantly higher, probably somewhere more around $1,000 like we saw on previous generation Threadripper 16 core CPUs. And this is really something that has been building for a number of years now, ever since the first lineup of Zen CPUs came out with their Infinity Fabric, which really offers AMD perfect scalability, and it's why they're able to basically glue together. Remember that terminology that Intel threw around, kind of throwing shade AMD's way and saying that they glued together their processors, which really doesn't give them credit for the Infinity Fabric and just how special that is, and it's enabled them up until now to be able to use chiplets and things like Epic, Epic CPUs and also Threadripper and being able to put three, four, sometimes even eight chiplets on a single package and then have perfect scalability no matter how many cores or threads they throw onto these things without having to sacrifice things like clock speeds and now with them coming along to seven nanometer much further ahead on uh, compared to intel who are still not having trouble with 10 nanometer they are just they are poised right now to just absolutely dominate the market with seven nanometer from the better yields and having that infinity fabric which is going to be able to make all of those chiplets communicate perfectly although we only got two chiplets on you know the 3950x it's still going to be an absolute monster with 4.7 gigahertz and that's you know and they're still able to hit that 105 watt tdp of course when you do get into overclocking stuff like that or even if you're just running 4.7 all core if you were uh, obviously the boost is not going to be all core but if you were 
to OC at the 4.7 all core, you're going to be above 105 watt TDP. But there's a reason that it has the same TDP as the 3900X and the 3800X, and that is because of the better silicon from the binning process that AMD is doing right now in preparation of the 3950X. And everything we've heard so far is that the yields are incredibly good. So even though they are binning all of these CPUs, I don't think it's going to be an issue for people to get their hands on the 3950X once they do become available, unless they, you know, I mean, I guess it's possible they could sell out, but I'm sure, you know, it's at a few weeks, maybe months down the road, it's not going to be an issue for people to get their hands on these processors if you want them and you're willing to spend the $750 for the 3950X, which I think is going to probably be the best CPU in the lineup. I mean, obviously, it's it's going to be the best. It's got the most cores. It's got the most threads. Right now, AMD is actually pushing for the 3700X thing. That's going to be one of their better parts because that's actually got a 65-watt TDP, and that one is being binned as well. But we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, with July 7th coming up in just a couple of weeks, we'll have some initial numbers on Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9. 3950X, we'll have to wait a little bit longer going in to September. Next up, I want to talk about Microsoft and Windows 10 and their 1903 update, where they are now actually using machine learning algorithms to force users to update to the May 2019 update, which has not been without its issues. I actually just became aware of an issue last night. Me and my buddy went ahead and re-downloaded Battlefield 3 because we wanted to play some of the close quarter maps, which are still active to this day. And we were disappointed to find that our GPUs were being limited to around like 60% utilization. And this, I mean, it's not a major issue. We're both playing at 4K on 2080 Ti's and we were getting around 80 to 100 FPS, which is, you know, it's fine, but we were leaving a lot of performance on the table because this is actually an issue which we discovered looking on forums and on Reddit that uh, with the 1903 update, a lot of users are seeing low GPU usage in games. So even though we're getting perfectly acceptable frame rates, our GPUs were sitting around like 60% utilization and it, we could have easily been getting probably 150 to 200 FPS if we weren't having this update, which is specifically because of Windows 10 1903. NVIDIA has even said this as well on the GeForce forums, and they are working with Microsoft to try to get it resolved. So that's just one reason why you might not want to be on the 1903 update. However, Microsoft is committed to forcing everyone to update whether they want to or not. Quoting Microsoft, they say that they are taking this step to ensure that we can continue to service these devices and provide the latest updates, security updates, and improvements. They go on to say that for Windows 10 devices that are at or within several months of reaching end of service, Windows Update will automatically initiate a feature update, keeping those devices supported and receiving the monthly updates that are critical to device security and ecosystem health. They do also say that they will only be pushing out the Windows 10 May 2019 update to systems that will have the least amount of show-stopping incompatibility. So it's like they're already ready for this. They know that there's a lot of incompatibilities out there with different systems and different configurations, but they're going to be pushing this update out anyway. And I guess they're trying to focus on the people that are going to have the least likelihood of having a problem, but that doesn't mean that everyone is not going to have problems. People are already having problems. And once they start forcing this update out, then problems are definitely going to come about even more. So uh, yeah, it's just Microsoft just wants every Everyone on the latest version of Windows 10. I don't know why they feel this need to continually strong arm people into being on the latest versions, especially after what happened last year with the October 2018 update and the complete disaster that that was, which eventually became the December update because it was just so broken. They had to push it out, pull it back, push it out and pull it back again. So yeah, it was just a complete disaster and they're using machine learning now. So I'm not exactly sure, um, you know, what programs or different fixes you can do to kind of circumvent that or if they're going to be able to bypass that now. There are definitely ways you can stop Windows 10 from updating. You can use a program like Update Blocker. You can, of course, also go and do things like Group Policy Editor and Registry Edits to just stop Windows 
from forcing you to update to some of these major patches and updates. So there are definitely ways around this traditionally. However, with this new uh, machine learning algorithm, it remains to be seen on whether or not that's actually going to allow them to kind of bypass some of those things. Hopefully not. Um, I don't really see anything right now that would say that that would be the case. It just seems like they're using machine learning to really look at people's systems and figure out which ones are um, best ready to actually accept this update without having as many issues as, uh, well, as many issues as people have had already. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please leave me your thoughts, comments, opinions, always down in the comments below about the AMD binning for the 3950X as well as the machine learning force updates now. From Microsoft, I do look forward to that discussion, and as always, I do thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. And if you want to pick up a really awesome shirt like the one I'm wearing right here, the JP Circuit logo design, or any of my other shirts, you can head over to my Spreadshirt shop where we've got the NVIDIA GIMP Works shirt to make AMD great again. Also, we've got some mugs, the JP Circuit logo in various different colors and things. So be sure to hit up the links down in the description below for the shop as well as sources for all of today's stories and today's sponsor, levelgo.com. Everything's always linked down in the description, especially the merch shop. That's always linked down there. So if you don't get a shirt today and you want to get one later on down the road, just expand that description box and you can grab yourself one and look as sexy as me in this t-shirt. So as I said, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you all tomorrow for a another video. Ta-da.